My name is Peggy, and I'm 35 years old. This is a story of my family that fell apart after I moved in with my 60 year old mother. I lived with my parents and my brother until high school. My brother Neil, who was three years older than me, and I did not get along well. He was bigger than other kids and grew up to be the bully. He treated not only his classmates, but also me like his servant. He always acted almighty to me. When his friends came over to play with him, his attitude became even worse. Hey, you slug! Bring us our juice! He ordered me around. She's so dumb and slow. She can't understand anything bad you say. He insulted me in front of his friends. Even though our mom saw him bullying me, she would say, It's great that you discipline your sister. You will be a respected man in the future. She praised him. My birthday was often forgotten, but she always prepared a lavish gift for him. My dad, on the other hand, remembered mine. He would secretly wish me a happy birthday, but he never protected me from them. When I entered high school, their attitude remained the same. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that they became worse. I was thoroughly ignored at home around this time. I despised Neil, so that was fine by me, but even our mom joined in. Whenever they saw me, they both giggled. I never heard what they were saying, but it was obvious from their expressions that they were making fun of me. I decided to go to university in another state to get away from them. I majored in economics and then went on to work at an investment bank. In university, it was tough to be alone without family support at first, but I met a nice girl from the same state as me and we shared a room in student housing. There was no way my parents would send me allowance. I studied and worked hard. Since I was in high school, I was interested in investments. After numerous tries and failures, I gained enough experience to make my own allowance. I studied all the time, but it was truly the first happiest time of my life without my mom and brother. Five years after I started working, my dad passed away. On the day of the funeral, I saw my mom, Neil, and his wife, Amy, for the first time in a while. My mom asked Neil, Hey, will you come live with me? He simply refused. He still wanted to enjoy life alone with his wife. Then, my mom changed her attitude and asked me to move in with her. If I did, I would have to quit my job. I contemplated it and thought it was a chance to reconcile with her. Hence, I agreed to move in. I resigned from my work and got a new job working from home. Life with my selfish mother was not pleasant, but she no longer ignored me as she had done before. A few years had passed since we started living together. One day, I heard a knock on the side door. When I answered, Neil and Amy were standing there. Hey, long time no see. He had not dropped by the house since our dad's funeral and suddenly showed up. It didn't matter how much time had passed, he still made fun of me. Amy watched our interaction in silence. I had met her several times, but we hardly ever talked. She must been talked into by him and always looked at me with condescending eyes. What are you doing here? I came to check on mom. As a son, that's what I should do, right? I see. He acted like a big shot. Anyway, what's going on? What do you mean? Don't play dumb. You got some of dad's inheritance, right? I hear you are spending lavishly. Sure, I got some, and he also got it at the same time. I don't really understand. You take care of it. He threw the responsibility to mom and me at that time. Amy and I will take the money, and you'll be kicked out of the house immediately. You won't be able to afford any luxuries. Luxuries? I never had any. Then Amy, who had been standing quietly, lashed out. Don't lie to us. You are taking the money that Neil is entitled to. 
She pointed her finger at me. They misunderstood that there was some inheritance left. If I was that rich, I wouldn't have been struggling to pay off my student loan. Anyway, I'm going to talk to mom now and kick you out. That's right. The money is ours. They walked into the living room. Doris, it's been a long time. Amy began to kiss her butt with a cooing voice as soon as she saw her. I thought you might be having a hard time living with Peggy. I was worried, so I came to check on you. Are you alright? Have you lost some weight? Neil pretended to be concerned. No way. I cooked every day, and Mom ate a lot. If anything, she was looking a little fuller than she used to. Hey, Mom, do you want us to move in with you? Oh, but I thought you guys wanted to live alone. Since moving in with her, I had been giving her a comfortable life. I thought she would want to stay with me. I realize that you might be lonely without me. Really? Home, Mom. She was not choosing me. I would love to live with you and Amy. I'm looking forward to it too. The three of them carried on the conversation on their own. Wait a minute. I'm the one living with her. Shouldn't you talk to me first? Shut up. You are no longer of any use to her. You are costing money just to be here. We'll take care of her from now on, so you get the hell out. I'm saying this for everyone's sake. After Neil and Amy got married, they lived as they pleased. They rarely came back to see mom. Amy, in particular, didn't know anything about her. I was worried that it would be difficult for the three of them to live together. You don't know your place, do you? You're always causing trouble to mom. I had no choice but to let you stay with her until now. Just get out of here, you beggar! Amy, who was sitting beside him, also chimed in. Exactly! We don't want a parasite in our house! My head couldn't catch up with the sudden turn of events. I had no problem leaving the house, but I was worried about mom. She had treated me poorly in the past, but still, she was my mother. I wanted to take good care of her throughout her golden years. I told her how I felt about her future. Are you going to be okay without me? You are no longer needed. I'm going to start a new life, and you are in my way. Kapow! Something in me exploded. I wasn't indeed a good match for her. Despite that, I had been supporting her. There should have been at least a word of gratitude. Besides, I thought that I had developed some kind of bond with her. Got it. If I'm in the way, then I'm leaving. I bought a lot of furniture. Can I take those with me? Whatever, take them. No worries, we'll buy new ones soon anyway. Neil laughed. When I left the living room, the three of them were talking happily. I murmured, Brace yourselves, in a voice they couldn't hear. I quickly prepared to move out and began living alone again in a city far from my family. My work didn't depend on where I was. I could do it anywhere with Wi Fi. I was so excited to be able to live a carefree life, remembering the old days. One day, while I was enjoying my free and easy life, I received a call from Neil. Hey, there's no money at all. He had moved in with mom who does inheritance money, but he realized that there was none left. Before living together, Neil had been in contact with mom weekly. She bragged to him that she had gone on a trip and stayed at the fancy hotel, that she had eaten at the fancy restaurant and so on. Hearing those stories, he was convinced that that left a large inheritance that mom and I were spending on a luxury lifestyle. He foolishly planned to live off that money. I told him the truth. It was my money that she was lavishly spending. No way, you don't have that kind of money. Well, I put about 3000 in her account every month. Besides that, I was also paying for food and utilities. After years of experience, I had become a home-based trader 
and was able to make a certain income from my investments. There were ups and downs, of course, but I thought I was well off. It was the truth, but he had no idea. He interpreted what he heard from mom as a great inheritance. Dad was an ordinary company employee. There was no way he left such savings and life insurance for us to lead such a luxurious life. Neil and Amy couldn't even figure that out. What the hell? What are you going to do about it? I quit my job thinking there was enough money to hang around for a while. He thought he could just get a job when the money ran out. Hold on, Neil. Have you ever met anyone who is living off inheritance? Who are you to act so righteous? It's your fault for not telling me beforehand. You give us $3,000 every month. Why do I want to do that? It's your brother's order. I wanted to laugh at his stupidity. Instead, I thought about educating him well as an adult. What do you think you are to give me orders? Of course, a big brother has authority over his younger sister. What a joke. Maybe if you are a brother who deserves my respect, you've never done anything for me until now. I have neither the obligation nor the duty to obey you. How dare you speak to me like that? Don't depend on others, you moron. Take charge of your own life. Mom, who had been listening to our exchange nearby, took over the phone. She went on trips, had dinner with friends, and bought clothes every month. Yet she still had money left. She conveniently thought that she was so good at managing money. She had no idea that I was putting an extra for her every month. Listen, help me out and send me money. She cried to me. You told me I was in your way, didn't you? Don't blame me. It was my dream to live with my son and his wife. You don't get married, so I thought I may never see my grandchild from you. Didn't you make it clear that you were done with me? Oh, come on, I'm telling you. I need you now. As long as you give me the money, you can come to visit me once a month from now on. Would that be nice? I couldn't say anything more than those idiots. I won't help you or Neil. I don't even want to see you guys anymore. Just give us the money! I could hear Neil screaming over the phone. I'm not going to leave my life being pushed around by you guys anymore. I don't want you in my life at all. I'm cutting tight with you, so don't call me again. Wait a minute! I will reflect on myself, okay? Mom hastily pleaded, but there was no point in listening to any more of her tones. I hung up the phone on them. My phone continued to ring, so I blocked their numbers. A few months later, I received a call from a relative and heard that mom, Neil, and Amy had separated from their ways. Money was their issue. Mom lost her comfortable life. She could not travel with friends or buy brand name clothes anymore. Her friends started distancing themselves from her, and she lived in a studio apartment with welfare checks. She was always so snobbish about her good fortune, but it was thanks to her daughter. Now that she's kicked her out, she's fallen. It serves her right, you know. The neighbors whispered what I wanted to yell out. She had tried to reach me through relatives and even used a private detective to track down my whereabouts, even though it cost her a lot. I censored it before she could ambush me and relocate it immediately. Since then, I lost all feelings for her completely. Even the memory of her disappeared from my mind. And then, there was an extremely arrogant couple, Neil and Amy. When they had no job and no money, and their lives were bleak, they bought all the time. Amy eventually got fed up with Neil and eloped with a young man. The man had some dubious debts, and he was being chased by shady people. They moved around, unable to settle in one place. Later, Amy and the man also separated, and she disappeared. Neil lived at home with his mom for a while, but he ran away with a small amount of cash. When they faced a financial issue, 
They had fallen out irrevocably. Mom was so angry that she reported the theft to the police. Although Neil wasn't charged, they became enemies after that. What was their relationship about? Growing up, they seemed like two close friends, but it was a fragile and calculating one to begin with. He was an abnormal person who took pleasure in abusing me. I thought they were connected by my presence. What an irony to kick me out and get kicked in the butt in return. Neil was later arrested for stealing cash and valuables from an acquaintance. He was unavoidably punished by the law. His employer of course fired him. His lawyer called me about his bail, but I turned it down without hesitation. I thought about attending the trial to mock him, but decided against it. I was also asked to appear in court as a character witness, but I was not interested in doing anything for him. I'm still a home-based trader, and my dates are hectic. It has ups and downs, but I continue to live a financially comfortable life. A personal trainer at my gym asked me out one day. We are now together with a plan of marriage in the future. I honestly told his parents about my background and my way of life. They sympathized and accepted me. It has been a hard life so far. I will use it as a great source of nourishment to build a trusting relationship with my fiancé and his parents. And one day, when my family grows, I want to create a warm and happy family without any discrimination or prejudice.